Yes, learning styles. What what do we know? How, how do we know it's useful? How do we know it's useful? How do we define learning I mean, is styles? Is it going back to like a, the Binet thing where you have extrovert, introvert? I think you have one common learning style. You have step Vygotsky by step. Vygotsky and also Vygotsky spoke about that in the, the social cultural aspect of learning. There's one type of learning, one type of learning style that happens to every human being, which is what happens out there. It's communication right. out there in the okay. streets, life itself, is teaching you. Also by observation and listening. You are learning because you are seeing people modeling their own lives. Right. And, and you start to learn. You learn with your parents, you learn with your friends, people out there. If something catches your attention and you're able to learn more and more, about what's happening there. That's, that's like you could, the, the learning you, you, style of learning styles. Right. You, what you're saying is that but even though there are different styles, there is this common one that we there all is do. There's a common you one. You might be a very shy person, you might be a very. A, no and, matter and what. So you're learning just by listening from a distance. Yes. Or you might be the extrovert by the way, who goes and By the way, one of the more respectful questions. forms of learning is listening and observation. It's probably the oldest, the greatest, and still, still there, always be there. By simply listening to other people talk, and, and the greater these, these talks are, the more you'll be learning. It's a very relaxed way to do. Most of the time it keeps your attention. Now, when we talk about learning styles, like if this audio visual is this visual, is it? You know, first of all, is it looks far fetched. That, that people would be so yeah. only uh, only he learns better by listening to music. music. I mean, <laughs> have you, how how can you measure that? Right. Or you're just assuming that that is the case? Or have you asked the person? If even if you ask, he may not know he, himself. Even if you ask, oh, this is what right I like. Out, this is what it you may think not be you, efficient. Might not be efficient. Right. So. Now, this is what Clark is saying. Are we going to Let's look at the evidence. classrooms into learning styles and then check if all those learning styles are true and then check if those that are true still work? Uh, you know what's interesting? I've been to a school like this. Mm -hmm. And they started, and I think what the value is, it forces people to keep a portfolio. I'm a visual learner, so that I. This is why in my portfolio you see beautiful pictures of all the stuff. It's not the learning style that was important. It was the exercise of documenting how that they basically are writing their own textbook. I think that when you teach it's that process, I think that when you teach or when you talk about or when you reflect on learning strategies. That's the moment when you kind of guide students into their different options. Mm -hmm. Options. Options. It's not, it's not options option. of learning. Okay, do you feel better going to YouTube and seeing this explained in a video? Can you just read it and have the abstraction level to understand it? Would you need fully assisted, you know, explanation? Do you need me to sit down with you and explain the hows and whys of this topic? Mm. So that is is when you talk that that's that's learning but Clark a strategy. Clark would say it's that's effective if you're starting from their prior knowledge. The, yeah, uh, that's effective if you're starting from from and, and that's how you. I don't see how you connect any you can't just type of this, learning the, and put it there. Yeah. If if I suddenly want to teach you about black holes, yeah. And you know, I, I, am I going to show you a movie or? Yeah. You know, there's something. First that, start with something what's that, a black hole? Okay, I don't I'll even know perfect, what a I'll star you, is. I'll give you the perfect example. There is a there is a you know music band of okay, the Beatles. We know about the Beatles. It's common knowledge. Well, you, for you and me. For you what and about me. the young guy? Okay. Now, we, if you come and tell me, you know, the Beatles really broke up in 1969. I go and say, where? They, where? But Let It Be was 1971. Right. And they say, oh, but here's the thing. They had already broken, so each one recorded individual tracks, and then Phil Spector put it together in a studio. And you say, oh, okay. Now, 
you will never again in your entire life will forget that detail. It's like the spider web. Something that connects with what is already done will never fall. Now I come and I tell you, have you ever heard uh, Los Bamba? I say, no. I said, well, that's a Cuban band. I'd love to tell you that they broke up because one of the guys died. Okay, in two months, you don't remember not even the name of the band, mm -hmm. let alone why they ever broke up. Because that's connected to no, no, there's no entity here to hold up to. There's nothing here. There's no. It's spot, not no connected web. to prior knowledge. It's not connected, and if, not, if it's not connected, you're likely to forget it yeah. very soon. Right. Now, this thing with the Beatles, you will never forget in your entire life, mm -hmm. because it came. It's a brick that was placed on a wall that's already built. The interesting thing is we've heard that song mm -hmm. and we didn't connect it in time. You gave me a time. Exactly. I had never thought about, hey, how'd they do the singing? If, exactly. they, were, you know, uh -huh. if they were mixed. If it's they the were same thing up. like when you say, oh, you hear a song in the radio by the Beatles and it says, oh, what is that song from? You can say the 60s mm -hmm. or you can say that's 67. It's from the... Uh, Sergeant Pepper. Peppers, right. It, because it's all connected to prior knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then, if you go to a seminar by the Beatles, and it, 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 it has 40 hours of a full lecture, you might go back with 90% of what was said fixed here forever. Because That's the power of prior, prior knowledge. knowledge. Right, right, right. And then you go to one on black holes, and you might live with only 5% of what was said there because there's no connection. Right. I mean, in the, in, in the person that doesn't know what that right. is. As soon as they start to talk about big mass and big energy and, and attraction and, and zero uh, gravitational pull or, or super gravity, you're going to go like, this, this is not, this brick doesn't have a wall in here right. to be placed on. And, and that's what it is, so we, we have to go there, we have to identify well, that. start with, um, look out your window, you see that sun? Mm -hmm. Where's that light coming from? Exactly. Ah, star, star. Where's the star come from? Uh -huh. Well, what will happen to the star? And why What's do you think, room? why do you think that there are, in the, in, in the, in the end, learning and everything yeah. is, is being able to read something, grasp it, and not forget it. Why do you think that there are so many experts on sports and music on the streets <laughs> because it's it's related to things they know yeah, they watch yeah. this year next year next year and they mention uncountable facts of different players and numbers and names and dates of birth and how many homers and how many these and how many steals and how many these and they remember everything i wonder how these people can remember books and books of information because it's all related to things they know and Clark would say... They only have to add something else. They've transferred it to long-term memory. Lo it, it's already in the long-term memory. They don't memory. have to keep it in. Yeah, it's already there. But, he, but the short time, the short term, knows that this thing has to be put in the big, big department, in the big storage, and where it goes in there. And the way I'm going to get there is by repeating it for yeah. several days. Yeah. And then maybe each month I will talk about oh, it. Oh, by the way, because I will tell somebody as soon as I hear that, oh, did you hear? I didn't know Mickey Mantle had over 500 homers. Oh, did he? Yeah, 520. Oh, oh my God. Wow. And that he won he four homers in a game. Only six people have done it. These, these, and these, and that. And then you're... you're oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then he goes and tells somebody I wonder how else. many and that's homers the, that It's the real that training. Way. Yeah. And why do people... Do it. They do it because they are interested, because they got the motivation, because they got prior knowledge. And in the same fashion, you could do physics, mm -hmm. mathematics. Now, some people would something. say this is random learning, but what it is, it's it's a system. It's not now, random learning. And Maria Anderson calls it free range learning. And what we can say Probably is, better. why are you eating that grass? Well, because it's close to me, and I don't like the other grass next to it. Mm -hmm. I, I want this piece of grass because mm -hmm. it looks attractive. Mm -hmm. I've had some similar grass before. Yeah. And then I see some other grass over there. I'm going to walk over there. So she yeah. calls this free range learning, and it's eventually it pulls together. The thing is that it happens.